Tropical Weather Bulletin number 78. It's June the 1st, 2014, and it's the beginning of the Atlantic and Central Pacific hurricane seasons. We have one Invest active at the moment. It's Invest 93E, just south of Mexico in the eastern Pacific Ocean. And that's the one we're watching at the moment because it's the only system out there in the whole wide world right now. Um, and it could de develop into a tropical storm as it heads towards the eastern Pacific. So let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery, seeing what's going on around the world, just in case there's anything out there. Uh, the western Pacific, there's a few little disturbances here and there over Micronesia and around um, towards its um, east, towards the Marshall Islands. Uh, we're looking at a few disturbances going on there, but nothing really noteworthy, um, nothing that's likely to develop into a cyclone anytime soon. The eastern Pacific Ocean, while well, the central part is fairly quiet, only the far eastern part is uh, beginning to show signs of activity. And of course we have the remnants of Amanda, what, whatever's left, left of what was left of Amanda, still in the uh, eastern Pacific off the coast of Mexico. The North Atlantic also remains fairly quiet so far, just a few clouds going across the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean at the moment. Um, but we could possibly see a storm form in the Atlantic in a few days' time. We have a bit of a disturbance going on over the Yucatan Peninsula extending towards the Gulf Coast of the United States. The Indian Ocean is looking fairly um, interesting. There's a little disturbance going on in the centre of the Bay of Bengal in between the, um, um, the Andaman Islands and Sri Lanka. And also another one on the other side in the Arabian Sea, but nothing um, that has developed into an invest or anything like that. So 93E, currently with winds of 30 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,009 millibars. Um, and that's located just south of the southeastern extremity of Mexico, near where it borders Guatemala um, and, then, and El Salvador further on to the uh, east. The storm is expected to turn towards the uh, southwest at first and then towards the north. That's what the models are suggesting right now, though a northward movement might be more obvious from the off. Uh, what does look likely is a landfall in Mexico, or at least a very close pass, before it dissipates in around three or four days' time. But that's the best we can see from it at the moment. The NHC have given it a 40% chance of development, 70% chance in the next five days. Um, so it certainly seems like a probability that the storm will form in the next few days. Current warnings in effect for the storm. There's a few advisories in Mexico for rainfall. Uh, mainly the um, coastal regions from uh, Chiapas, uh, Oaxaca and Miochacan. Uh, my pronunciation may be all wrong with all those, but never mind. And Guerrero province as well in Mexico under rain advisories right now. Sea surface temperatures where the storms located at the moment are fairly high, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius at the very least. Uh, 26 degrees of course is a threshold for cyclone development and that's all we need to see a storm form. So. Uh, we may very well see our next storm in the eastern Pacific in the next two or three days, or perhaps even less if it gets its act together. The western Pacific, very warm waters on the western coast of the Philippines into the, um, uh, the China Sea, the South China Sea. 30 degrees waters here, 86 Fahrenheit, very much um, conducive for cyclone development. That extends out really far to the east as well, over the Micronesian Islands and towards Taiwan to the north. The Atlantic. Uh, by comparison remains fairly lukewarm, 26 to 28 degree waters generally extending as far as the same latitude as Florida and the same longitude as the Lesser Antilles. The Gulf of Mexico, most of it now is warm enough to sustain a tropical cyclone which is important as we go into our models in a few minutes. The um, shear map, first of all looking at the Indian Ocean, you see quite low shear amounts in the Arabian Sea in particular. The Bay of Bengal is a bit more mixed. Um, a few pockets of low shear where those disturbances were, so it would be interesting to see if anything comes of that, but high shear on both sides of that. Um, <coughs> but yeah, it seems to be decreasing there as well, so it might produce a little bit of an opportunity in the coming days on either side of India. Looking at the eastern Pacific, it's um, a bit of a minefield really, only a little pocket of low shear which is where that invest is right now, but it remains low enough and the forecast, as you'll see shortly, uh, calls for that low shear to continue in the next few days as it heads, to, heads towards Mexico. The southern Atlantic, the southern Gulf of Mexico rather, looks like a very high shear environment at the moment, uh, but it's staying rather constant as of right now. It'll be interesting to see whether that falls or increases as the storm moves towards the north. The western Pacific um, 
High shear amounts towards the international dateline, low shear amounts near the Philippines to the um, east in particular of the southern Philippines and in the uh, South China Sea. Fairly low shear amounts but it is increasing on the whole. Uh, further up towards Taiwan and beyond there, very high shear amounts. You can see it moving towards the northeast there, really high amounts. So it is decreasing um, in one or two locations. Uh, looking at the latest satellite image of the uh, water vapor in the eastern Pacific, you can see the invest, it's pretty much centered on that. You can see how it's a rather um, very moist environment actually. You can't really see any dry air around the system at all. So that's certainly a good sign taking into the future um, we might see some development it could be quite rapid if it takes full advantage of these conditions but as you can see invest 93e still a very disorganized system you can barely see a circulation to be quite honest but there are thunderstorms developing over the um, western and southern parts of the storm uh, the north and eastern side remains fairly bare at the moment um, so we'll have to see how that one goes um, over the next 24 hours it will tell us whether it's likely we'll see a tropical depression forming anytime soon or not whether it takes advantage of the um, of the conditions it has or not but those thunderstorms the storms fairly strong heading towards the mexican coastline slowly but surely would certainly provide heavy rainfall over mexico if they reached land indeed some were um, flaring up on the mexican coast towards the end of that loop there computer models and this is where it gets interesting the CMC model has the storm taking a bit of a loop before heading towards the north and striking Mexico and another storm forming at the very end of that loop there. Um, striking Mexico, a very close location to where Hurricane Barbara struck last year. The GFS model is even more interesting still. The storm stalling initially and then uh, part of the storm uh, reforming in the Atlantic in the southern um, Gulf of Mexico near the Yucatan Peninsula and then grazing the coast of that then moving northeast into the Gulf of Mexico and possibly striking somewhere on the Gulf Coast as a significant cyclone. That's the only one that really says a storm for sure. Well, the ECMWF has a bit of a hint there too. Um, a storm moving into Mexico and another one forming on the other side um, and then possibly moving out into the Atlantic as a significant system, but that's quite far out on the ECMWF one there. The NavGem has a different scenario. The storm moving towards the northwest and then um, dissipating, really turning post-tropical before even making landfall in Mexico um, and this is what the intensity models are currently saying it's a few hours old but it should still be relevant um, we're looking at a tropical storm according to the DSHP model which is probably the most reliable a moderate tropical storm 50 or 60 miles per hour um, and we're looking at it moving towards the north according to the GFS model and then striking Mexico very close to the point where Barbara struck last year at a very similar time of year as well but i think the intensity will be just a little bit lower so looking at the wind shear um, that seems to be rem remaining quite low for the next few days no higher than 15 to 20 knots which is certainly good enough just about to sustain development sea surface temperatures very warm all the way through 28 to 29 degrees celsius generally possibly up to 30 degrees as it moves towards the coast so no complaints there and the um, humidity around the storm remains very high as well no less than 70 percent in the next five days so that should keep the storm uh, ticking over fairly well indeed uh, it just needs to get itself organized in my opinion so moving on to what happened on this day on June the 1st. Well, in 1968, Tropical Storm Abbey, that one's pictured there, formed in the Caribbean. In 1988, Tropical Depression 1 moved over Cuba, causing severe flooding and 37 fatalities. And Agatha formed in the Eastern Pacific in 1992. Tropical Storm Nestor formed in the Western Pacific in 97. There it is a few days later at its peak intensity, one of many Cat 5s in that season. Uh, in 2007, Barry formed in the Gulf of Mexico. That was one of its first advisory maps pictured there. A tropical storm Gonu formed in the Indian Ocean. That would become a very strong storm indeed. And in 2008, Arthur dissipated in the Atlantic. There it is pictured, making landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula on this day six years ago in 2008. Last year, no storms formed or dissipated or were even active on this day. Um, so the Eastern Pacific, of course, we've had Amanda a category 4 high-end cat 4 at that and we may see the arrival of Boris very soon or indeed the arrival of Tropical Storm Arthur in the Atlantic it will all be uh, very interesting to see in the next to watch and see in the next four or five days 
West Pacific, the next storm name is Mitag. Tapa was the last one, one of two typhoons that have formed so far, both Cat 1s, Faxai and Tapa. The next Indian Ocean name, should one of those disturbances form, is Nanark, followed by Hood Hood. And um, in the Australian region, the next storm is Kate. I doubt we'll see any there down there now. And the Southwest Indian Ocean storm names, the next one is Girani. And in Fiji, it's Newt, the next name there. You can visit the website for all the latest information on current storms, including the Invest 93E, of course. That's the only thing going on right now. Um, and any of Force 13's outlets will keep you as up to date as possible. The website's the best place to be, though, in my opinion, force-13.com. And the uh, video platforms, of course, with these tropical weather bulletins and much, much more, YouTube and Daily Motion. Just search Force 13 on any of those mediums. Um, and on social pages, Facebook and Twitter, search Force 13. It's at Force 13 on Twitter if you'd like to send a message there. And you can also add me on Skype, uh, just add Fool 13 for tropical weather chat. <laughs> 